everyone, welcome back. Back here in studio with us this morning once again, El Paso Police Sergeant Robert Gomez is going to be joining us every Wednesday right here on the KFAX 14 Morning News. Yes, thank you once again for being here with us today. So we want to first talk to you about the grant that was just approved yesterday to or by City Council to continue to fund the Anti-Gang Center. Like I know that I have done uh, a story before on the uptick of gangs here locally and also spoke with the FBI also saying that there's been an uh, uptick of gangs. So tell us how this initiative and this funding to keep that gang center going is going to benefit the community in terms of how that crime has been going up and what resources does it provide? Well, the tax center has been in existence for several years now, and that grant is something that's happening every, yearly. Um, the importance of that is to keep uh, you know, the operations of the center going. It's a multi-agency center, and it uh, combines all the efforts of all the law enforcement in, uh, in the El Paso community to fight against gangs. So it's a, it's a very vital and necessary thing, and we're happy that the grant was approved and, and was able to be awarded yesterday. Yeah, and another topic we wanted to discuss today was obviously how to report a crime, a process that can sound simple actually isn't. And what do you want to know about, what do you want people to know, I should say, about that process and how it works? You know, the first thing you should think of is how we prioritize our calls. So life always comes before property. So if it's um, because we are short and we've come up with this um, several times, our calls are prioritized. So if it's a weekend or a busy evening, and uh, you have something stolen from your house, for example, um, you might want to consider alternate reporting than calling the police because you might be waiting for a very long time. Um, so the ways you can report crime are uh, through the non-emergency, of course, 911 for emergencies. Uh, there's uh, online reporting and there's telephone reporting. So there's four different, and then you can also go to the regional command itself and they'll take the report for you. So you really have to prioritize what, what are you reporting to the police. If it's a, if it's a violent act that's already passed and there's no, you ha you're not in any danger, you might want to consider reporting it uh, either to a command center or, uh, or the non-emergency uh, number. But if you are calling for services, depending on the priority of the calls, you could be waiting some time. Yeah, and I think that's something that the public um, might have those complaints about of the long times that they're waiting. And on average, on a non-emergency, how long can people expect to wait? And where, what is a good time to say, I know maybe people say, well, I've waited an hour and I'm calling again. Um, do we want them, you know, block, calling that much? Or what's an estimated amount of time that they can recall and that they can wait? Well, it, it, it all depends on the, on the time of day, usually uh, evenings and uh, Graveyards on weekends is more busy for police services. Yeah. So if it's during those times, if, if it can wait till the next day uh, to go to a command center or call over the phone, then I, I would do that. Um, the wait time will vary. We will respond, but we can't tell you exactly because as these calls are coming in, um, they can't tell you you're next because another higher priority can take over and that officer will be broken away. It's, it's fluid. Yeah. So they, they really can't give you an estimate through 911 or through a non-emergency, and uh, it changes you know minute by minute. Yeah. So you really have to focus on what are you reporting to the police. If it's something that can be done over the phone, online, or at a command center, you really want to take advantage of those of that those services in order to get your report in quickly. And no matter what it is, whatever they're reporting, how critical is it, or is it, does it even matter how soon they report it? If a crime were to happen, they're reporting that crime to you guys. Is it important that they report that crime ASAP, or is it okay if they wait a little bit and then they decide they want to report? You know, it depends on, on the crime itself. We're talking about a real broad topic. Um, of course, anything that has to do with, um, uh, you know, life or assault or, or violence needs to be reported immediately. Um, anything that involves property can wait some time. They're all, all the calls are important. Yeah. You just have to make that judgment call is, can I wait till tomorrow or can I use any of these alternate methods of reporting? It also depends on um, what actually happened. If there's an extensive follow-up, that no, if nothing can be done immediately and it requires follow-up, that's something you can report online and to the, the non-emergency number because it'll take detectives following up to investigate their crime. Um, patrol is, is, is mainly used for immediate, uh, you know, preserve of life situations. And that's why um, it's important to evaluate what are you reporting to the police. 
All right, some good information though. Well, Sergeant Gomez is actually going to stick around because after the break, he's going to answer some questions directly from our viewers on Facebook. Yes, don't go anywhere. Keep it here. We'll be right back. We are continuing our community conversation here with El Paso Police Sergeant Robert Gomez. Yes, he joins us now to answer some viewer questions from Facebook directly from you guys at home. The first question, let's get right to it. It's from Javier Hernandez. He's asking how the department plans to deal with SB4. So SB4, as we all know, is, is, is tied up in the courts right now. So really, until that process is done, we won't have a good picture of how the law will be. And we don't that at that time we can get, we can talk about how that law will be enforced. But right now it's just there's too many unknowns and we really have to wait for the process to be done before any preparation can be done. All right. Our next question here is from Claudia Lara, who is asking, why doesn't animal control pick up stray dogs in Horizon City? He says they have a big problem with the loose dogs over there and that people always drop off their dogs over there and they, they don't always have their dogs out. So they are talking about they've been attacked every a mm -hmm. few times out there. Well, as far as this question, um, you know, Animal Services services the city of El Paso. So Horizons in the county, I believe the county has their own, uh, but they're both, they're, it's an important subject. Um, so as far as that specific problem, I can't answer too much because uh, we, we service the city of El Paso. Uh, I know Animal Services and right now Animal Cruelty Unit, it's, it's Anti-Animal Cruelty Month, and they are working very hard to bring awareness to those types of messages this month. Um, as far as uh, that specific question is very difficult for, for me to answer. And with the loose dogs in the city, that is an animal services issue. But when it comes to the attacks, is that something that the police department gets contacted about? Yes, with the animal cruelty investigation unit, which is that the complete title, what happens is, is whenever there's a, a dog bite or some but neglect, yeah. uh, animal services will be the initial. And you can get through animal services by contacting 311. Okay. They'll make the initial assessment based on their assessment. If it's animal cruelty, they'll refer the case to the police department. If it's a dog bite and there's some kind of uh, attack, we will investigate it as well. Uh, so that's the process in, in the city. Great information. Moving on to our next question now. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Katie Garvey asking, why are officers responsible for booking and transporting on most shifts? It takes the officers off the streets. Um, we do have a company that helps us with our transport and our booking process, but there's a lot of legal requirements that are required by not only the jail, but also the, the legal system that requires officers to be there. Uh, we try to uh, eliminate the wait time as much as possible, but uh, the, the inevitably there, there's still responsibilities and, and requirements that we have to do um, that requires an actual police officer. So we, we, like I said, we try to get everybody out in the field as quickly as possible, but there's a lot of different variables that, that come into play. All right, and then our last question here comes from Roseanne Enriquez, and it reads, traffic control against speeders. We need more presence in school zones to get those parents picking up kids. That park where this sign clearly states no stopping or parking, and they want police officers to start ticketing those whose expire or tags have already expired. You know, this is a very uh, serious problem, not only because uh, of the danger to the children and the people going, but it, it's an inconvenience for the people taking their, uh, their children to the schools when people don't follow traffic laws, parking. Um, it, it is a very important process, but we have to look at it as a whole. And we've time and time again came to to the news and reported that we're very short. So the police department really focuses on city streets, highways. Um, we do have school districts that have their own police departments. So I would recommend to reach out to those departments and see if they can help immediately around the school. Of course, we do assist, but we need to use all our resources. And yeah. every school district has a police department, except for Isleta. But um, you know, if we work together, we can definitely, hopefully, you know, not have anything tragic happen at these schools. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and Sergeant Gomez, you're going to be here every Wednesday with us here on the KFOX 14 Morning News answering these questions directly from viewers. You can look out for that prompt on KFOX 14's Facebook page, where we'll probably post that next Monday to prepare for Wednesday's segment. So just be on the lookout for that. But thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Yes, yeah, thank you so much. We'll have a replay of this conversation and past community conversations on KFOXTV.com.